Hello, everybody. It's two o'clock, so here in uh, Michigan. So it's about time to start this webinar. This webinar is about uh, trap management, uh, subtitle being uh, how is it an essential component to your decarbonization goals? So in this webinar, um, I'll be covering uh, specifically the why, the how, and the what, all related to trap management and how to make it effective and how to be efficient when you do it. So first, you know, if we look a bit of, uh, you know, the um, housekeeping, the length of this webinar is about 60 minutes. So it's about an hour and we'll have time at the end for a Q&A session. All participants are muted, so you cannot ask questions directly. And questions can be submitted in the Q&A section. Uh, Q&A section is at the bottom right. Uh, you should see three dots and there's Q&A. You can also use a chat. Um, and I'll review that at the end when um, I've covered all the slides. Uh, this session is recorded, so people can see it later on. Either you can review if there is something you uh, want to highlight, or if you, you know, people were unable to attend, they can see it also later. We recommend uh, to close any background apps or browsers that you have that could you know, impact streaming quality or sound, and you know, hopefully you enjoy the webinar. So first, quick introduction. My name is Philippe Mauck. I'm a global director of the Termara Insight Group. Um, originally from Belgium, I moved to Michigan. I'm here based close to Kalamazoo, uh, Southwest Michigan. And I've been here for almost five years now. I've, I've been with Armstrong for more than 10 years and I'm mainly now focusing on trap management and all the product related to uh, traps and how to test them, how to maintain them. So any question, feel free to send me an email, uh, Call me, this is my cell phone, or just connect on LinkedIn if you want to know more about the new product that we are developing. I'm just posting new stuff on a weekly basis. Before we start, a quick overview of Armstrong International in case you don't know who we are and what we do. So Armstrong International was founded in 1900, so it's uh, 122 years old already. And it's um, actually five generations of family ownership. So we right now have the fifth generation handling the company. It's 100% family owned. And we have the sixth generation around the corner or in the making. So uh, that's coming. We are a global company. We have our, our main factory here in the Three Rivers, which is uh, south of Kalamazoo, uh, here since 1900. We are in Belgium since uh, 1969, in China since 95, and India since 2008. Those four factories are the main factories where we manufacture all the components for the steam, hot water, and humidification business. So all those four are actually really covering all the products. And we also have other factories like uh, Mexico. We have a factory in Denver for flow measurement, in Canada for heat coil, uh, as well as Korea, uh, joint venture in Japan. We have a factory for humidification in France and another factory in Italy for control valves. Now, the core of this presentation is trap management. Why steam trap management? And typically, one of the issues we face is that the steam traps are seen as just pipe accessories. For a lot of your know, purchasing management, the steam trap is just a T or an elbow, and they don't pay much attention. They are looking for the cheap stuff, and they don't really care because it's just a piece of pipe. When technically, the steam trap is typically the reason of most of the failure in process equipment. You have you know, issue with your heat exchanger, the coils, uh, there is you know, a water hammer happening, and typically those are very expensive, and the reason is the steam trap. And typically the steam traps are overlooked. And it doesn't matter if you have 20 steam traps, like a hotel, for example, or 200 in food pharma, or 20,000 in a refinery, you need to maintain, you need to check them at least once a year, and you need to be able to maintain, manage them, and replace them quickly. So that's all the importance of a trap management. If I'm looking at the steam loop, you know, complete steam, steam, steam system to get an understanding of what we are looking for, you start, you know, with the boiler. So the, the steam loop has four parts. The first one is the generation. That's where you create the steam. So it's basically you heat water and you create steam. Steam is then going to the distribution line and either you're know, high pressure, then you reduce with the pressure reducing valve and you go to a low pressure steam. 
this is where you know you have a lot of steam losses because of um, just uh, lack of insulation or just long pipes. And that's why you need steam traps along the way to remove the condensate. Just best practice, always take the steam from the top of the pipe. As you can imagine, the condensate is at the bottom, so you don't want to take you know, the steam from the bottom of the pipe. Always take it from the top. One thing that's very important too is to have drip legs perfectly sized, so you don't, you know, you are able to remove the condensate on the drip legs. The next part is the process or the users, and that's all actually the, the equipment using the steam. You know, until now, the distribution is just to maintain, to have the steam going from one place to another. Now you have the users, they really use the heat from the steam, either to cook, to sterilize, to heat, it doesn't matter of your process. When it's done, the steam will actually condense, give all its energy, and it's condensing into the water, which is the condensate, and you have the steam trap. The steam trap is removing the condensate from the steam system. And you go to the condensate return system that's going back to the boiler. If you look at that in a perfect system, it means that you have water, you boil the water, create steam, steam is condensing, it's going back to water, back to the boiler. It's a perfect closed loop. So it could work like that forever. Obviously it's not because you have steam losses, uh, leaks, uh, you have direct injection, so you always need to add more feed water. Me means also you need more chemicals and you need to maintain the conductivity in the boiler. So there's always maintenance. So you want to have the system the best possible. So you want to return as much condensate as you can. To do that, but you have you know, to have good trap and you don't want your trap starting to blow live steam through the condensate return. You don't want the trap to be blocked and backing up the condensate. You don't want leaks you know, and losing that precious uh, steam because it's a lot of energy. <clears throat> so the primary function of the steam trap is to remove the condensate of the system as quickly as it collects. Typically, you don't want to keep the condensate in the pipe. Uh, it will lead to a bunch of issues that I highlight a bit uh, after. But that's not the, that's only one of the functions of primary. You also, there's a couple of other stuff that you want the steam trap able to do. The first one is to minimize the steam losses. You want to have a long life and dependable service. Uh, if you look at the life of a steam trap, it can be from three months to 20 years, depending on the technology, depending on the application. So there is no one fit all. It's not like you can take one trap and put that everywhere. That's not true. There is a specific trap for specific application and typically you need to look and that's how you are the most successful. It has to be able to resist corrosion, it's a bit obvious. It has to be able to vent non condensable gases, uh, CO2, uh, oxygen, operate against back pressure in case on, you have back pressure on the condensate return line, you don't want to have to all that condensate back to the steam system. Be free from dirt problems. Uh, you can imagine most of the, the piping, uh, it's, and unless you are in the pharma industry, it's all stainless steel, but most of the time it's carbon steel, and the carbon steel, you can imagine with condensate, you have corrosion, and if you have uh, corrosion, you have rust, and the rust is going to the trap, so you don't want to have the trap being blocked all the time. Steam traps, uh, there are three main families. The first one uh, is thermostatic. The thermostatic are steam traps that are opening based on temperature. So when it's hot, the trap is closed. When it's cold, the trap is open. Another one is thermodynamic. It's uh, also called a disc trap. That's a control disc. And uh, this is based on velocity principle. It's the velocity of the steam and the velocity of the condensate being not the same. The velocity of the steam being higher, it will close the disc and not let the steam pass through. If it's condensate, the condensate will go and will be able to be discharged. The last one is a mechanical. The mechanical is based on the density and all are, they are all like the inverted bucket or the float and thermostatic. It's uh, the density between steam and condensate to uh, open and close the, the valve by uh, like if you take a float, the, you lift the float and the float is going up and down to uh, discharge the condensate. So, trap management, if you see here, that's the typical roadmap to decarbonization. And 
a lot of people now are talking about net zero and decarbonization. To get to uh, full decarbonization, you need first to trust, do something with a trap. So the trap management is the first step in decarbonization. If you don't maintain your traps, there is no way you can have a complete decarbonization because you, you are just blowing steam everywhere. You are having um, cold traps and that doesn't work. So first step is to look at all the steam traps, maintaining them, testing them, making sure that those are working perfectly. Then you can look at other option to be able to decarbonize and go to the net zero. Steam trap failure. So it's a question that's coming very often. It's yeah. How many traps are failing? Uh, sometimes we have the, uh, the answer, oh, it's only 2% of my trap are failing. And that's typically impossible. Um, if you look here, uh, it's an example of uh, you know, light industry. And in light industry, about 50% you know, of the trap are low pressure. And if you look here, you know, I'm, I'm listing here thermodynamic, inverted bucket, uh, P-metallic, and you see the service, service life you know, in years, um, you're like an inverted bucket, it's 15. It means that the annual failure rate is 7%. If it's uh, 10 years, it's 10%. It means that you know, every year on average, there are 10% of the B-metallic that will fail, um, no matter what. And so you, uh, you do that. Uh, we do the same for medium press pressure. Uh, let's say it's about 45% of the trap population. And the same on the high pressure, uh, mainly on the drip legs, uh, is 5% of the trap population. And you see that the life expectancy is going down. The higher the pressure, typically the, the steam trap lasts not as long. So now if you start looking at your all and you crush the numbers, you see that the average is close to 15%. So it means that in this case, this example, 15% of the traps on average have to be replaced every year. Uh, unless you put all brand new steam trap today, then you know you're good probably for the next you know, five to six years. Existing system, when you have replaced the trap over time, you see that the failure rate is, you know, in this case, about 15%. So now the goal is to look at that number and say, what you want is the failure rate at any time. It means that any time you do a snapshot, any time you do a, the test of all the traps, is to be as low as possible. It means that you are maintaining your traps, you are replacing them quickly, all the time, not just once a year, not uh, every two years, every week. So the trap failures first, you know, there are two types of failure. The first one, the traps can fail open. It means it's leaking or blowing through. What's happening in that case, it's first you could increase the back pressure in the condensate return line because you're just blowing steam. It means that it's reducing the flow for the surrounding steam trap because as you know, the flow is a differential pressure. There's an inlet pressure and outlet pressure. If you increase the outlet pressure, you have less flow. And that's how you get stalling on uh, heat exchanger. The stalling, what it is, is you don't have enough differential pressure on the steam trap. Therefore, you cannot remove the condensate, then you start you know, backing up the condensate in the heat exchanger, and then the heat exchanger, you know, typically there's a control valve, the control valve will then you know, say, hey, I cannot reach my temperature, process temperature, so the control valve will open, and you have live steam going directly on the condensate inside the heat exchanger, and then you start having water hammering and you damage the coils inside the heat exchanger. Another thing that's you know, obvious is the steam losses. Uh, if you start your blowing steam either in the condensate return line or outside, it's just money to the window. There are safety issue, you know, if it's, uh, especially if it's uh, steam blowing outside, uh, people can be burned. Uh, it's pretty dangerous. And then the environment, obviously, because, you know, steam, it's uh, water. So you're just, you know, losing uh, energy, losing uh, water, losing chemicals, that everything you have done for nothing. And this is typically the one that is the most obvious that people can calculate a return on investment. They can quickly see that, oh, yes, steam is expensive. I need to replace my traps because if they are losing steam, this is how much I'm losing. But what's less obvious is when the steam trap is actually failing close. And failing close is in case you know, the trap is plugged, uh, either the orifice is plugged because of the dirt or the mechanism is broken. You could have the float in the float and thermostatic, the float could be puncture. And so the float is actually full of uh, water and cannot be lifted anymore. Um, it can be many reasons. And those are um, 
less obvious as far as calculation of the return investment, because what's the value of a gold trap? Uh, it's impact your process, and this is typically more costly than steam just passing through. So one of the, uh, the issue is water hammering. Uh, you get, you know, if the trap is closed, then you start having your water in the concentrate, not the concentrate, the main distribution line, and then you start having water hammering. You also damage turbine if you have a low pressure saturated steam, for example, and even on a high pressure, if you don't have the dry steam, you start having issue on the turbines. You start having piping corrosion, erosion on valves and re reducers. All of that because you start backing up uh, condensate into the steam system. Another one is the flooded heat exchanger. That's you know, decreasing production, reduced heat transfer. Uh, you have uh, batch process losses and thermal stress uh, because uh, the condensate will cool down and then there is uh, steam uh, you know, very hot coming on top of it and then you start having issue and then that's how the pipe is failing. Another one is the non condensable gases. As I said before, the steam trap is supposed to remove as well the non condensable gases. First, the air is an insulator, so the heat exchanger is less efficient. Another one is the oxygen in the pipe is leading to corrosion because uh, you are actually creating carbonic acid, H H2CO3. You get uh, what's called system binding when the flow of steam and condensate is blocked because you have a, a pocket of air somewhere. And then also temperature drops because the steam pressure drop. Uh, if you have a mixture of air and steam, you have a loss in pressure, and so then you have a loss in temperature. So all of these are related to a cold steam trap, and those are typically the things that people don't pay attention to, not enough. The most obvious, as I was saying, is when the, the trap is uh, failing open and you start blowing steam, uh, the calculation here uh, from the United Nations, and if you're uh, clicking on, on the link here, you can actually access uh, it's, uh, the website of the United Nations. If you take the uh, AM0017 uh, right here, you can actually download here the PDF. And this PDF is actually detailing how to calculate you know, the, the steam losses. So it's, uh, it's not something that, you know, it's not an Armstrong trick to sell you steam traps. It's really something uh, that was done for carbon credit. So you see here they are highlighting the good trap, blow through, leaking, rapid cycling, plugged, and so on. This is basically the formula to do the calculation of, you know, you see here, it's in a metric in this case, it's how many uh, kilogram of steam for time T, which is, you know, typically we do that by, uh, per day. Uh, you see here, it seems complicated, you're know, looking at first, but it's actually pretty obvious. Uh, you see the one divided to by 2.2 is basically just uh, to go to the metric and uh, from the imperial. And so you see there is FT, FS, CV, H, and then the inlet pressure and outlet pressure. So inlet pressure, outlet pressure, that's no brainer. You know how to calculate that. Uh, just something I always highlight, it's in PSI A, a bit tricky. H, it's basically uh, how many hours so if you put just 24, then you have the losses per day. So very easy. So the only unknown here are the FT, FS, and CV. If I'm going down, you see that actually the FT is the type of failure. Blow through, leaking, rapid cycling. So one quarter, 0.2. So it's basically the first two that are typically very important. So FT, very simple. FS is the application. And you see here, it's typically the first two one. It's either a process steam trap or a drip and tracer. And then you see the FS is either 0 0.9 or 1.4. That's very complicated. And the CV, it's uh, the flow coefficient, and it's actually 22.1 times the diameter of the orifice in inches square. So once you know, when, uh, what kind of steam trap you have, you know that uh, it's uh, a quarter of an inch, for example, orifice, but then you, you can calculate the CV. So you can easily go back to the, the, the formula and do the calculation because now you know FT, FS, CV, and you're good to go. So that's the way to do the calculation. Back to my table here, if I take an example, you know, 150 PSI, uh, eighth of an inch, you see here I'm losing 1600, more than 1600 pounds per day of steam. 
In that case, if Steam is $10 per 1,000 pounds, it's $6,000 a year. Even if you pay $5, it's still $3,000 a year. And you will never pay so much for a, a small Steam trap on a Drip Lake application. And that's why, you know, replacing the trap is always beneficial because you save money at the end. Buying, you know, cheap trap that, uh, you know, that last, don't last long, eventually it's costing you more because as soon as they start losing steam, you're actually losing a lot of money, way more than you would pay if you, uh, you had buy, you know, a very, you know, the, the right steam trap for the right application. So now when you look at um, the why, so you know, we know why, you know, we should, you know, through the trap management, how to manage. So how to manage the traps. So, oh, there is a, so first, you know, just a summary. So every year, five to 15% of the trap in service will fail. Uh, we increase, maintain efficiency. Uh, the payback, it's six to uh, 10 months and the opportunity to standardize. So you don't have to chase the trap. There are some quick wins, but very important. It's you need to test often replace quickly. And that's the, uh, the key to be able to, to be successful. So how to manage the trap? So first you could use binders and if you like colors, you could have kind of binders of every color for every unit. Or you could have a, a red binder for the high pressure or you could have a blue binders for the cold traps, up to you, but it's unmanageable. You could imagine that you do that you know, year after year, you'll never go back into that. And that's typically what people are doing. They pay for a survey and they get a, a report and the report is going on the shelf and they are, okay, I did my 2022 steam trap survey. We'll wait for next year. No, nothing is done. Traps are not replaced. Another way is people manage on Excel, on a computer or another software to manage the trap population. The issue is there if you have uh, any virus on your computer, if there is any issue uh, with the file, you lose everything. You lose the whole history. If you have 20 or 200 traps, it's probably manageable. Uh, when you start having 500, 10,000, uh, that's another story. And then, you know, it's even more complicated to, to manage them efficiently. And that's why uh, Armstrong came about uh, five years ago with a program called Sage. So Sage is available and uh, you see that your QR code that's to download for the uh, either iPhone or Android. Uh, you can uh, download a free version for 25 traps that you can play around. Um, or, you know, you also have access online uh, on the web browser. So this one, you know, really will uh, help you to manage all the trap population. How it works, what it does. So basically, if I'm coming back uh, here, you see, this is an example uh, with the you know, ABC company. And this is what you would get uh, with the Sage platform. So first, you get a dashboard with an overview of either you have one location, but you might have, you know, in this case, you see there is your Chicago and Three Rivers, and I could maybe look at only Chicago, you know, with your, your 66 traps, or I could look at both of them. Imagine you are a food plant with, uh, you know, 30 or 40 uh, factories across North America. You could actually have 40 locations, and now you can click and select and say, I want to see only the West region or only the East region, and you can start to compare. You can here uh, with the view, you can actually save selection. And so you can create you know, the East, West region and so on, and starting you to look and to assess and start doing some benchmarking to see how people are doing against each other. You have a complete look of all the location. This is you know, giving you the, um, uh, the frequency, how often the trap are tested. Obviously here is an example the performance, the losses, uh, all the traps. At the bottom here, you will see the evolution of the steam losses. Hopefully for you, it's going down, not like this. You see here at the bottom left, you see the CO2 emission. You see also the fuel used and the steam losses annually. On the right side, you see the alerts, you know, with the blow through and the cold plugged and so on. On the top, you see it's accounts, your know, dashboard equipment. On the equipment, you have the list of all your equipment. If I take an example here, you see that you could have a picture. You put the physical location, the last updates, uh, the manufacturer. We have all the traps on the market globally. You can put all the information. 
then you know you see you know there's a lot of information you can even put all the information about the inlet valve outlet valve the strainer and you see if it's green it's okay red it's not okay so if i click on that for example i have the detail i see it's a gate valve and it's a, you know the stem is jammed so that's a condition so i can switch you know from the table view to the diagram and i can see the whole thing so i can have up to five pictures i can add here and so now I can start, you know, managing all my traps because now I have all the traps here, either for, you know, all my location or just for one location. We can give access the people in one location. They can only see the traps in that location. Uh, people at the corporate level can see all the locations. So things that we can do and we can manage. You get, you know, all the information here. And then uh, what you can do also is uh, reporting. So in the reporting, you can do an executive summary. You can uh, do the steam trap survey summary. So that I see what uh, was done at the last survey. There is a work order. So the, the work order is actually, if I'm you know, clicking on that, you can actually download a PDF with only the failing traps to give to the maintenance people. And so they can go and replace the traps. Uh, there is a trap detail that can give you uh, up to you know, one, one page per trap. So if you have 20,000 traps, I don't recommend uh, printing the, the whole thing. And it gives you an information with the pictures and everything. And last but not least, you also have an Excel sheet. So you own your data. So you can actually export everything from Sage. So if you, you know, five years from now, you uh, don't want to use Sage anymore, you just export everything. You don't lose anything that you put into Sage. And the dashboard here, uh, every time there is uh, something, you can look at that. You can also get alerts through email when something is failing. That's the Sage platform in a nutshell. And if you want more information, we can uh, do a, a detailed presentation uh, to show you and explain you how it works. Now that you know that there is a better way to manage the trap population, the question is how to test, how to test the trap. So historically, people had manual methods. Uh, early on, it was just a screwdriver and people were trying to listen to the trap, but it's typically the visual method, as people are just looking to see if there is any outside leak. Then there is the temperature, there's the temperature gun and the people are checking the, the temperature of the trap to see if it's cold or not. And then there's the sound, and so they need to listen uh, carefully to the, to the trap and assess if the trap is working or not. Trust me, you take five technicians and you have five answers. Um, it's never the same. Uh, people are always like, some people are very conservative and they would say, no, nah, no, I think it's okay. And others are just like, no, no, it's, we need to replace it. So you also have, you have to the resources and to have somebody that, you know, has the knowledge of you know what's going on. Ideally, you want the same person to do the survey year after year. Another way is the Sage UMT. So the Sage UMT, it's a device that uh, Armstrong launched uh, two, three years ago. It's completely uh, integrated with Sage. So you test the trap and all you have to do, and the, uh, it's in the app and the app will show you those pictures to explain where to uh, touch the steam trap. You need to uh, press with about five pounds of pressure on the trap and you press the button and the, the device will test the trap for you and it's connected with the um, the, uh, the phone uh, through bluetooth and will update sage automatically so at the end uh, that back of the the umt the device there is a charging port and there is also a threaded uh, socket for extension pole allowing you to test traps even if uh, they are hard to reach so it could be that you don't need a ladder. It could also be that it's in a confined area. And so you don't need uh, a permit or you don't need you know, two or three people. You are able to test the trap without going inside the confined area. You see on the, the picture on the right side, you see there is a yellow tag next on the left side of the steam trap. And this is actually here you see on the left, that's the RFID tag. The RFID tag allows you to just scan the tag and on your phone, the Sage will open the page of the trap automatically. So you don't need to search for the tag number manually. It's just to make your life easier and it's just faster. We, with that device uh, in some refineries, we go to more than 200 traps tested per day. So 
it comes with a, a case, a holster, um, and everything you, uh, you need to, to start. There is always, also, if you see in the case, there is a place to put the, an iPad, so you can, uh, you can have it around instead of a phone. Uh, everything is um, with the package. So let's have a look at uh, how it works quickly. So basically, here in this case, uh, the operator is uh, opening the case, is uh, switching his uh, phone on on the stage, and now is pairing the UMT with the phone. So you could have one UMT and a dozen phones. Uh, you know, every uh, technician could have uh, you know, a phone, and they can pair the same UMT. Is scanning the RFID tag or opening the right page, testing the trap. And it's going from not tested to okay. Now he's going to another one, RFID, and now he's testing the steam trap. And in this case, it's going actually is uh, NT, which is not tested. That was the first stage to BT, which is blow through. And automatically, it's updating Sage on the phone, obviously, but also in the cloud. So if you are looking at a computer, when somebody is doing a survey on site, you can also see what's going on on site in real time. In case there is no network, uh, no worry about that. The, you can do all the survey offline. So if you are a basement, for example, and once you get online, you can push everything to the cloud. Nothing is lost. So, this is a quick overview um, about the uh, UMT with your know, 10 plus hour of battery life, more than enough to, uh, to spend the whole day with the UMT in your pockets. But there is a challenge. You know, no matter, you know, if you do the inspection and you do that you know, once a year or twice a year, uh, ideally, you know, as I say, test often, replace quickly. But if you do an uh, inspection, you know, let's say once a year, and the last inspection was in April, you know, 2021, and the next one is planned, you know, in 2022, but you have a failure in June. So it means that the next inspection, which is in April, 2022, that's when you will find out that the trap is failing. It means that's 10 months of wasted steam, or if it's a plug trap, you could have downtime or safety concern. The repair will only be done, you know, in April 2022, when you know it. So to be able to fix that, the, the ideal solution would be to test more often. So you could test with the UMT. So when it was a manual testing, it was not easy. You know, with the UMT, it's a bit easier. But even it's not always convenient to test uh, all the traps you know, every month. So how do we could, you know, as soon as you have the failure, you would know it and repair it. So, looking at, you know, Armstrong history, you know, back in 1991, we, we started monitoring traps. Uh, first, it was something you had to go from trap to trap with a flashlight and look at the color of the LED. In 2002, we came uh, with a steam eye. The steam eye was an acoustic and uh, temperature. In 2011, uh, we came up with uh, another design that was uh, on wireless heart and ISA 100 to be able to also, with acoustic and temperature, monitoring the trap. That was already better because now we are, we are monitoring it, you know, testing the trap in the case of uh, those devices every hour. So we test every hour because you know, there is a battery. If you test more often, you just, you know, the battery will die quickly. And that's kind of the challenge is the battery. It's, uh, you keep having the batteries that you need to replace over time. If you look at a plan that could have, you know, 10,000 IoT devices and I'm talking steam trap monitoring, uh, machine health monitoring, gas detection monitoring, uh, safety relief valve monitoring, you name it. And you start having, you know, 10,000 IoT devices with a three year average life for the battery. It means that you need to replace, you know, more than 3,000 batteries per year, it means nine every day. And that's kind of a challenge. And that's why a lot of people, when they were doing wireless monitoring, they were only focused on critical steam trap a small subset of the trap population. We have better. So Armstrong last year um, invested in a, a company, um, it's a startup in California, and they have developed um, a new type of sensor. And that sensor is batteryless, 
It's harvesting the heat from the pipe to generate electricity. It's checking the inlet and the outlet temperature of the trap, and that's sending the information every minute to the cloud. And it's going you know, to the cloud and it's looking with an algorithm to look if the trap is working or not. Because it's battery-less, they can do that every minute. And that's why Armstrong was you know, really interested and that's why we are, we are partnering with them to develop and to see that as the next generation in uh, steam trap management. This uh, technology is right now fully available in uh, North America and some countries in South America, soon fully available in uh, Europe. And for each region, you know, um, just check with the, um, the local Armstrong office about availability and uh, where it stands. But this one you know, will give you charts like this one where you have the inlet outlet temperature. You see the, um, the, the green and uh, dark blue. In this case, it was you know, blowing through, then the trap was replaced, and then you see it was you know, a nice uh, differential temperature on the inlet and the outlet. Here, you see, uh, working perfectly. Here, an example of a cold trap. And so you see the temperature you know, of the steam is going down to reach the temperature of the, of the condensate. And that's how you can get an alert that the trap is getting cold and that it's plugged. This is another example because the Everactive solution is more than just uh, telling you if the trap is working or not. It's also assessing the steam system. You look here, if you do a trap survey, you would look that it's perfectly fine and it's working. But if you look those, in these cases, you see that, oh, there is something there is something that's not right here. What's happening? In this case, you know, we can relate with the ambient temperature. There is also a sensor for the ambient temperature. And now you start looking and say, okay, that's related. And this is typical of a thermodynamic steam trap outside. And when it's raining, it's just a machine gun, like we like to call it. A machine gun is just a disc that is, you know, slapping on the seat continuously and blowing live steam. Uh, you would see the same with an orifice trap. Uh, the orifice trap is typically sized for a specific pressure and load, but as soon as you have you know, more condensate, you start backing up the condensate, and if you have higher pressure or less condensate, you start blowing live steam. And we can you know, start now monitoring that and see really what's happening on the system. The whole Everactive sensors are going to a uh, gateway. From the gateway with an LTE SIM card, uh, that's the easiest. We can also use the Wi-Fi, but typically people want us to stay out of the IT system. We connect directly to Sage for you to view. So it means that now you can ideally monitor 100% of the trap population to reach your net zero goal. But if you want to go step by step, you can use Sage to monitor or manage all the trap. You have a monitoring of uh, 20 or 30 percent of your trap population, and everything else is done by the Sage UMT as a transition to a full blast monitoring. Some uh, quick highlight: it's uh, half inch to six inch, uh, up to 210 psi. We can have you know, a thousand sensors per gateway, and the harvesting you need uh, a delta T of 15 degree Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius. There is a supercapacitor to bank some energy. It's a very low power uh, network that's des designed and uh, was done by Everactive, IP66 class one div two. Now, the big question is, you monitor you know, up to one minute, that's great. But how do you replace the trap quickly? Because now you think the failure is in June and you know right away that you test and the trap is failing. So you have the report, you have your trap selection, you go to the purchasing and they need to, uh, the ISO 9000, they need three quotes and they are looking at the, the cheapest. And then it has to be delivered on site and with the supply chain issue, uh, trust me, it's not that easy. And then it takes months to repair because the people don't have the right tool or it's, they need a shutdown or they need to cut the pipe or um, they look that they need a hot permit. And so now you did everything right to test often, but there is no way to repair quickly. And that's why uh, years ago, Armstrong developed the uh, two ball connector. So the two ball connector started with the, uh, the basic, the standard connector is just a piece of uh, stainless steel and the steam trap is just attached to it. So that uh, piping connector can be just welded on the pipe 
and you can you know, easily replace the trap. It's just two bolts. There is one uh, with a strainer called the IS2. There is a complete solution in the strap valve station, or there is also a four bolt connector. The four bolt connector is for the high pressure. You see here is uh, an overview of the what's available right now, and it's not even everything because on the four bolt now we also have a freely float uh, trap as well as a thermodynamic for high pressure on the four bolt connector. The TVS, you see also that uh, you know, to avoid leaks, you see that on the left side, this is you know, the inlet valve, the strainer with the blowdown, the steam trap, the test valve, and the outlet valve. Everything can be packaged in just a single TVS 4000. So it means you know, less risk of leaks and easy to replace because just the two bolts. If I'm looking here, uh, uh, old video, it's showing you know, how the trap is replaced. This is on the tracing application in a chemical plant. And uh, you will see here the, the technician will replace the steam trap. So the first thing he's doing is just closing the inlet and the outlet valve of the TVS 4000. One thing, the, don't forget gloves, because that's a typical mistake of uh, newbies is opening the test valve to remove the pressure inside the steam trap. Then what he will do is to remove the bolts. There's the two bolts that's attaching with the steam trap. And this video is in real time. Uh, the trick is, is he has the right tool, he was ready to do it. So it might take a bit longer, but uh, not as long as cutting the pipe and welding a new steam trap. Now he's moving the two balls. There we go. You steam trap from the box. You can see that the, the flange in the front is adjustable, so you can, depending on the uh, how the pipe is, a uh, horizontal or vertical pipe. And then now he's putting the two bolts back together. And during that time, you know, the inlet valve is closed, so it's, it means it's, uh, it starts to backing up some condensate. Uh, any inverted bucket, you always need to prime it. Uh, priming means that uh, you need to put uh, condensate into it to uh, be able to, uh, to work. In this case, because the uh, inlet valve is closed, you back up end of condensate to fill out the, the trap. You see here is uh, opening the inlet valve slowly and is basically now filling the bucket, the inverted bucket with the, the, the condensate. The outlet valve is still fully closed. At the same time, the test valve is open. So now you can see the steam, the flash steam going out from the, the, the condensate is, is waiting, is making sure it's cycling. And when it's cycling properly, then you can fully open the inlet valve and fully open the outlet valve is first closing the test valve, obviously. So there is no gasket between the, the steam trap and the TVS uh, 4000. There is actually a graphite uh, gasket that uh, is with, uh, in each steam trap, the graphite is uh, built in the flange. So uh, it's, it's a new one every time, basically. The TVS 6000 is the, uh, the other solution, which is a uh, double block and bleed. It's for uh, safety, and it's basically two inlet valve and a bleed, two outlet valve and a bleed, and same as the TVS 4000 is the strainer, blowdown, and the test valve. Um, we can look uh, here you know, quickly as well at the video, and the QR, the, the QR code on the side, it's, uh, it's basically a link to the YouTube video. And so the TVS 6000 is a 10-in-1 uh, steam trap that uh, eight, Isolation point and a strainer that's a two bolt, same as uh, the whole range of product that we have. So basically, you take any traps that you already have. It could be either flange, uh, we have socket weld, 
Uh, if you want flange, we can also have a um, face-to-face -face dimension that, uh, that you need. We have uh, only two handles. One, uh, each handle uh, will actually move two valves. And those are the bleed, bleed and uh, inlet and outlet valve. At the bottom, you have the, the test valve, as well as the strainer and the blowdown valve. Everything is a single package. The steam trap, the two bolt, and it's good to go. So in, in this case, just replacing, it's in between flange, but it, it could be that you, know, you decide to have the TDS uh, welded on the pipe and staying there forever. You have your know, one valve for the two inlet valve. So in this case, I'm closing the two inlet valve. I'm opening the, uh, the bleed to see if uh, there is any leak for safety. And I can do the same for the outlet, making sure there is no leak. There's no you know, condensate, the pressure from the condensate return line able to come back into my steam trap when I'm replacing it. I'm able to you know, remove the pressure inside the trap. I'm removing the two bolts and replacing the trap. <coughs> and I was explaining it can be in any technology, inverted bucket, thermodynamic, Freely floating, thermostatic, floating thermostatic, and so on. So they are the choice is yours. So the complete trap management program it's basically allowing you to test easily with a Sage UMT or wireless monitoring, and replace quickly with a two bolt solution or the four bolt in case of a high pressure. To end uh, this webinar, the uh, Armstrong University um, knowledge, uh, no chair is energy wasted. You can uh, either go online. We have more than 200 uh, courses that are completely free. You just need to register and uh, you can do uh, classes on uh, either steam, hot water, humidification. Um, also, we have classes on uh, safety, uh, health and uh, safety. So you, you can look at that. It's completely free. We also have Armstrong University on site. Uh, we have a learning center here in Three Rivers, Michigan, but we have also a learning center in, uh, in Europe. We have uh, uh, also a learning center in China, in India, Korea. So just check with your local uh, Armstrong office for you know, what's the program. Uh, here in Three Rivers, for example, we do uh, STEAM classes every month on STEAM basics. Uh, we do also a specific class for customers when we do a specific subject. Any question, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you have again my email, my uh, phone number um, or on LinkedIn, and I'll be happy to, to answer all your questions. So now I'll be looking into um, if there is any question in the, the chat or the, the Q&A, and I'll be you know, stopping. Um, stop sharing. camera on and let's see um, the Q and A is um, so Kurt, uh, somebody was asking us how, how can I get um, the, the recording. So, so basically the recording will be sent to all attendees, all the people are asking for the, the recording. We will send uh, the link uh, just after. Oh, let's see, it was. So I don't see many questions uh, so far in the Q and A or the chats. Here, uh, oh, do you need a gasket between the TVS 4000 and the new trap? Uh, yeah, I saw that question uh, popping up and uh, yeah, the, the answer was uh, yes and no. You, do, you don't need a gasket because we provide a, a graphite ga gasket with every new uh, steam trap. It's, uh, it's um, you, you have the, um, 
the flange on the on the front of the, the, the trap of any of the trap uh, inverted bucket uh, thermodynamic and everything is the, the the flange that can rotate and built into it we have the all the, the gasket that you need so they will be replaced every time so somebody was asking about uh let, let me know uh about orifice type steam trap so an orifice trap is um it's a very basic technology. Uh, we, we also have one, but honestly, we don't, I don't sell it. Uh, it's something that is working properly in the lab. Um, it's working properly in some application where you have a constant load, constant pressure. So if, um, if there is no change, then you can size the orifice trap and it works. Uh, on ships, for example, you know, the, the ship, they are at sea, they, they don't like mechanical device that can break. So the orifice trap is good for them. And even if the orifice trap is blowing steam, they, they don't care much because they don't really care about energy uh, losses. But what we have seen is a customer and there is a Department of Energy as a whole PDF. Uh, they did a study about that. And the feedback is on process application when it's outside, they typically don't really work well. Uh, why? Because as soon as you have uh, too much condensate, you start backing up. The concept, if you have not enough for high pressure, you are blowing steam. And so it's, it's not something that is it's constant. And another issue is uh, the, the dirt. So every time, uh, unless you have stainless steel pipe, you can quickly uh, plug the orifice. So this is typically not a, a steam trap that I would recommend. Uh, I know some people claim they good for life. Um, I would argue uh, with that and I can prove it. The question about the sensors needs some special calibration. Not sure which sensor. So if it's uh, the Sage UMT, the, so the, um, the yellow the, uh, handheld device to test the trap, there is no calibration needed. It's uh, calibrated for life. So you don't need to worry about that. And uh, as far as the wireless monitoring, there is no calibration needed on any of the devices. Next is why don't they build in a trap monitor system into the new trap? Yeah, that's uh, the the issue is it's the a steam trap is a mechanical device and if if you had to you know buy a new trap monitoring every time you buy a trap that would be very expensive eventually and, and that's why typically the monitoring system is on the side because then you replace the trap and the monitoring system will remain. We we used to have uh, sensors that were you know. Uh, like uh, conductivity sensors, but then it's with a trap and we have seen your know, maintenance people or a contractor just not paying attention. They remove the trap with the sensor, they throw everything away. So that's typically why it's not built in for now. But, you know, with the, everything uh, going, uh, you know, downsizing and the costing going down, it's maybe something that uh, that could be done in the future. Um, Another question is uh, how much a steam trap will affect the deaerator if it uh, fails open? Uh, that's a good question. Um, it depends on the deaerator. If it's an uh, atmospheric deaerator, the, the thing is uh, the steam trap will be blowing steam. The steam will eventually go to the deaerator and you will just see live steam uh, going uh, out of the deaerator. If it's uh, a pressurized deaerator, then um, you, will, you might you know, increase the pressure within the aerator. It's very application specific. It's uh, something you know, we'll have to, to look um, in detail, but depends on the distance too, you know, because if the trap failing is very far away, by the time it reaches the aerator, uh, the steam is probably condensed. The monitoring system, the question is uh, the cold weather, the cold weather. So the minus 50 degrees Celsius, uh, it's a bit low. Uh, just typically everything related to electronic components is uh, minus 40. So the, the minus, minus 50, it's, um, it's a bit outside of the range of the, the application. And it's, typically, it's basically just for because of the electronic components. I 
I don't see any more questions. As I say, any question, feel free to give me a, a phone call. I'm, I'm based in Michigan. I'm, I'm traveling all across North America. Um, you know, we do uh, your Sage UMT or your know, wireless monitoring. We, we do uh, trials. Uh, you can test. Uh, we have a network of uh, representatives in North America and across the world, and they can you know, showcase the, um, you know, either the UMT. We can do trial on the you know, Everactive if you want to, to see how to get you know, to the net zero. Uh, you let us know. We are, we are here to help you. Okay. I think people are leaving. Uh, I'll leave it. I'll leave you here, and uh, hopefully, I'll hear from you soon. You know, as I said, get back to me. Get back to our Armstrong network, and we'll help you. You know, save energy and reduce CO two emission. Thank you, everybody.